guys, I am Chris Kaler. And I'm Amber Foster Kajin Cosplay. And today we're back again, guys, with Zero. Episode 19, Season 2. We met Pandora. Uh, Who is she? Who we didn't know. Uh, she's, she's mentioned the Witch of Vanity, right? Yeah. And uh, she says she speaks for her. You think she is her? So maybe. I mean, her power is much stronger than that of an Archbishop. So uh, maybe. But then that would mean that she survived what happened when Satellic apparently killed all the other witches. And she seemed to be... Responsible uh, for, for something. For something like a really, really bad guy. Yeah, because uh, Fortuna mm -hmm. really went mad at her and was like, you need to apologize to my brother and his wife. So she might be responsible for what happened to Satella and what make her a cavalk and kill yeah. people and just destroy the world. I don't know about that, but we'll, we'll have to figure it out. Uh, her power is fucked up. She can basically rewrite history. <laughs> That's, that's crazy. That's crazy strong. Um, she is after the seal and the key to open the the, the door that seals basically uh, Satella and her husband. Yep. Uh, she is with Amelia facing that door right now. We don't know what she did to Fortuna and Petalgeus who absorbed the witch factor. He absorbed the power basically that it, he's not compatible with it, but it's gonna turn, in, turn him into the Petalgeus that we know from season one, but at the moment he, he was still in control, and he was supposed to fight Pandora with uh, Fortuna, but yeah. <laughs> we also believe with what we saw that maybe Fortuna will become Puck. She did promise to Amelia that they were going to stay together. She was always going to be with her, and she called her Leah, kind of like Puck used to do. And I mean, the hair color is very similar to the fur color. The powers also. The power, very similar. I don't know, maybe Pandora so, did something to her. If we are right about it, just what happened? You know? Either, I mean, do you become, can you become a spirit when you die? Maybe? I don't know, but still, uh, we, we're gonna see what she wants with the seal. Uh, hopefully Amelia's gonna be fine, but we know she basically gets stuck in ice for years, so that's gonna happen. Uh, and back in the real world, we're also learning about the beginning of the sanctuary. Stuff is about to happen over there as well, so we're gonna jump in this episode <laughs> and keep going with the flashbacks and, and discover more stuff about the backstories. Yeah. So let's jump into this. Don't forget to subscribe, guys, if you want to see more of these episodes and know when they come out. And check out our Patreon for the full reactions. Yep, in the meantime, let's watch it, guys. Next episode. Okay, so we focused on Amelia this episode. The next one, we'll finally see what they learned about the creation of the sanctuary. All right, I can deal with that. It has to do with his fight with what Roswell wanted, you know, what which he could not get, but mm -hmm. he he is still fighting towards that one goal. So the creation of the sanctuary apparently would be linked to that, but we'll keep it for next episode. So Amelia is fucking strong. I mean, we knew she had powers, but it li it looked like every power she showed in the first f season and, and whenever she fought in the second one. Has she fought in the second one? No, um, right? Anyway, anytime she no. fought, it, it seemed like it wasn't really her power. She was just borrowing it from Puck. Well, she kept using powers from what we saw. Um, from the spirits. For, for Trina right? using. But she wasn't using, like... It was all her in this one. Like she, yep. it came from her. Mm -hmm. If if other spirits somewhere lended her power, she, I mean, they did so without her knowing. She was just fucking using ice no, and that's stuff. That's our powers. Yes, because if I remember correctly, Fortuna and Archie used both ice powers. Maybe that's the thing from the elf. Maybe community. You know. Maybe we still don't really know if Puck is Fortuna, but. I'm gonna bet my head on it that she's that Puck is Fortuna. I don't know how, but I mean that would make make just so much that more sense. That would make sense, but we'll keep that theory till we finally because learn. technically Fortuna is dead. Sorry, she's <laughs> she's dead. So who said she didn't just come back into a spirit? I don't know. I like it's the last episode. I don't know if it's a thing, but uh, what matters. To me is like, first of all, Emilia is so fucking strong. I know she could, you know, she probably, she had this opportunity, this chance to blame herself. Like she could have blamed herself a lot for what happened. Maybe she did deep down when she started, you know, uh, getting her memories back. Uh, I feel like 
she could not be blamed for what happened considering she was a kid. She was heartbroken, she was in grief, uh, her mother had just died, and the, the culprit was basically right there. She, she tried to kill that person and her power just took over and, and it was just too strong. But I am all for her potentially freeing all the people that she froze if it's a thing but, but then that means we got it how it did happen she can maybe find a way to undo it well you know now she knows that she's capable of doing so and of doing that and she has confidence a lot more confidence now than than she used to have uh, thanks to Subaru and thanks to you know facing her past which I, I I'm loving because I love this new Amelia, the one that, you know, saw this tragedy and instead of, you know, blaming herself and, you know, falling down and, and crumbling, she basically told, you know, Echidna, I am using this as, you know, a reminder and stuff that I did that for sure, but I am going to move forward, you know, I'm yeah. going to find a new reason to fight. I'm not stopping. Yes, Echidna is calling her selfish, but we did have this conversation with Subaru before about how okay. being selfish is part of being human. You know, every yeah. human gets to be a little selfish. We have a bit of every sin in us. Mm -hmm. It's fine. That's what, you know, makes us human. And Echidna is really not the right person to call anyone selfish, honestly. <laughs> Still. Yeah, indeed, no. I'm like, let's go, Amelia. Be selfish for a little bit because she she's always been trying to live for others. Mm -hmm. You know, it's never been about her. It's, well, sort of, a little bit. When it came down to, you know, becoming um, the the queen and stuff, like the the winning the royal, the royal selection, it was mostly because, you know, she wanted people to accept her and, and see her. So that was a selfish goal. That's how she painted it you know, to Subaru, but still, considering every, everyone's opinion of her all constantly changed her actions, constantly, you know, led her to other things, and basically she was living through other people's eyes and for other people's uh, goals because what they thought of her mattered most to her. So I love that now she's basically saying, you know what, I'm going to do my thing, I'm going to follow, you know, my motivation, I have, I have a goal, I'm going to save the people I froze, I'm gonna, uh, you know, apologize to them and give them a chance to, you know, see this world that, that my mother ta told me about. Mm -hmm. I love this. It's it's basically Subaru to Porno when he took confidence in himself. And even though, you know, I know they, they are capable of doing that with because they did it with Subaru. I know that she might not be completely healed from what happened, but there's this potential of... Even though, you know, we're still going to maybe see traces of trauma, she's still going to push forward, forward and she's going to have friends, so... I love this, although I know Rizuru also has the, the, you know, the power to switch things around and make things yeah. disastrous again yeah. through tragedies. Yeah, it might happen again soon, before yeah. the end of season two. Yeah. I, but I still feel like right now we are in a good spot with every character. You know, Subaru is fulfilling his promise to Roswell. Roswell is, you know, tagging along and he's like, he's, he's into <laughs> it right now. You've got Otto, who basically declared his uh, friendship to Subaru and he's helping. Garfield, you know, had made peace with his past and he's helping. Amelia made peace with her past and she's going to do task number two. I feel like we're in a good spot, so we cannot fail now. I hope we don't, but I'm, I mean, it would be weird if we did because we'll, we would have to do this all over again. So yeah. I don't think we will fail this time. But how are we going to make sure, you know, because, you know, to take care of the, the rabbit who's around, the, the white rabbit. Yeah. It's around. So, like, I, it showed up because when, you know, when in that timeline, Emilia probably had a breakdown and she used that terrifying power that we saw everything turns to just, you know, snow and ice, and the mana, basically, that she she used attracted the rabbit. Yeah. But it is it is still close enough to feel that, so we still, we need to deal with the rabbit. Uh, we'll have to deal with uh, the assassins, because Roswell still sent them, so they still need to be dealt with, unless we manage to do something next episode to stop this from happening. We still need to save the people at the manor. <laughs> We need, and then now we have a new goal, uh, which is to save the people from the village where Amelia grew up. So that means facing the serpent too. Yep. Uh, if if the, the serpent touches you, you disappear. Yeah. Great. Great. Just great. <laughs> the whale wasn't no, enough. No, it wasn't. <laughs> and the rabbit wasn't creepy enough, but I think I, I'm going to like the serpent. I think it's terrifying and uh, it's got potential to be a great villain. So... Mm -hmm. I'm excited for that. But uh, yeah, speaking of villains, I do think that um, we have the villain of the show. 
But, I but mean, go on. one of the villains of the show that's been introduced to us, at least one of the bigger villains that we've yeah, seen so far. I think that she might be the, the main villain of the story, if yeah. you think about it. Because the more I think about, the more I think of it, and the more I'm pretty sure that she's responsible for what happened to Satella in her heart. Well, she's linked to what happened to Satella. She's linked to what happened to Emilia. Literally, uh, she was the one that took away her memories, so that would make she's sense. She's responsible for how Peter just became. She is responsible for t twisting Petal Goose's uh, so mind. Sometimes it become crazy because yeah, I thought this. Uh, I thought the loved ones were gone. I thought the well, but it killed it's not her. Just that yeah, <laughs> it I thought, killed her. I thought the power was gonna twist his mind, you know, because it's not compatible with him. So through the years, he would just lose himself because of that. But it's physically that. And mentally, the fact that he, he, he basically, okay, in his mind, he used this power for love. Mm -hmm. And it, he ended up killing his love, you know, the, the girl he loved. And then the other one just twisted his mind by saying that it wasn't wrong, that what he did was right and stuff, and that he should follow love as a motivation. So, And we know he gets obsessed with this later on, but... The, the reason why his mind just basically broke in that moment is because his motivation, his love, killed the, the girl he liked. So, and now he's just gonna be a shell overcome by the, the obsession of, you know, following love like he did in season one. Uh, I thought at first that maybe once he uh, broke down and froze everything, then maybe she's gonna froze. Well, no, he wasn't Pedro around. Just too. He wasn't around when she woke up. But he wasn't up. around, and it's true, it, it is true that if he was and did frozen, he would have still been frozen <laughs> in the present time. Yes. So what I mean that Pedro is the one who kept him alive from all these years. Well, you know? no, he's got the he's got the power now, so maybe that keeps him alive. And who's to say that they don't get to live for years and years in this universe? Yeah. We don't really know. Like most of them are half beasts and elves and and, <laughs> and stuff. Like, how long do they live? And with the yeah. witch factor, with the witch, you know, the the authority because I keep mixing the words, but I I know what I'm saying. But still, with the authority, who's to say that he just doesn't live forever? You know. Yeah. The other guy too is still alive, and he, he didn't age one day. True. In right. any case, so uh, yeah, Pandora needs to go down. Uh, that other, you know, Archbishop, uh, Corneli Corne Cornelius? Cornelius. Cornelius. Anyway, him also needs to I mean, at least be dealt with. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wouldn't say go down, but, but he seems creepy and he seems to be in complete control of his faculties and, and motivations. So. How can you get rid of the Witch of Vanity? We'll have to try and find a way. Emilia might have the power to do so. She tried over and over again to kill her. And yes, she, she was succeed. a kid. She was a kid who wasn't in control of her abilities. Now she's she's an adult. She's got experience. She's got Subaru to help. She's got confidence, and they have access to witches and stuff. And Roswell is there. Like they have a whole f fucking team. If they can't kill her, they can maybe seal her like they did Satella. <laughs> I mean, we could try to find you know the three, the dragon, the 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 knight thingy, the the, the guy with the sword, and uh, like we could try to find the three and then reseal this witch instead. Yeah. Especially if, you know, it turns out that we can free Satella and save her from her, her witch factor. You know? We'll see. In any I'm case. I'm hoping for a, a good think, ending. A happy ending, maybe? I, 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 till I learn otherwise, she is the main villain of this show for me right now. You know? Well, She's the only one with, with perhaps, you know, some of the other archbishops, but, like, I'll, I think they're less intense than she is, but I feel like... She's one of the only villains so far that we've seen in the show who hasn't given us a reason to doubt how mean she is. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not, I mean, for example, we take Roswell, he did a bunch of things, but we also know that there's a motivation behind it. You know, there's a, a reason born of his, you know, what he's been through, his past, his desires, so we can explain it. Mm -hmm. Right now, her, she just... It's like she's she lacks passion. She likes you know emotions. She just does things without a care in the world for who she hurts and what she you know destroys. And when she sees people in pain, she just finds that so amazing and attractive and stuff. I she creeps me out. So as long as you know she stays like this, I I'm gonna paint her as the main villain, and I cannot forgive her for what happened in Emilia's past. So she is the villain. We need to okay. take care of her. Eventually, they will probably tell me how that happened, how she came to be, and then my <laughs> opinion of her will probably change, but... 
probably. Maybe in the future, but that that is for the future. So yeah. Anyway, good episode, and I mean more flashbacks maybe next next episode with Rosalind Love in the sanctuary. Flashbacks. Yeah. It's so good. Huh. <sighs> okay, but we got Emilia's past, and the first task is done. So that's that. I'm just glad that she finally completed the first trial because it it took a really really long time. But and like apparently the other two will be easy now that she's easier. decided to fight. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe well, we, we know that the second trial is technically her uh, facing the multiple choices that she made. Just Perhaps, like with Subaru, yeah, you know? but she's so determined now to move on. Like even Echidna saying like it will be easy for you, you know, the next two trials. So it will happen pretty quickly, I guess. Uh, we will liberate the sanctuary by the end of the season, that's for sure. So I'm excited, and then we get to deal with uh, the manor and the rabbit and the serpent. And everything and all this else. Shit. With all the rest. <laughs> okay, they still have a ton of stuff that, that will happen. Like why season three will happen, definitely. <laughs> I don't I don't see another option. And I don't see this show pretty sure ending the, at the end of season yeah, two, you know? Pretty sure even the, the the light novels are not over yet, so that's also a thing to follow eventually. Any in any case. So Thank you guys so much for watching this episode with us. If you want to see the next episode right away, it is on Patreon already. You can check it out right now if you want. The link is in the description below. And if you don't, we'll be the next one to be out on YouTube, which will be next week, guys. So we're going to yes. see you then. Bye. Bye, guys.